Hello and welcome to worship with us at Kilbarkin Parish Church. I'm Dorothy, the Probationary Minister, and we will be joined by our regular worship duo, George and Myra. And Ian, our musical director, will also play a piece for us to reflect on later. Our reader this morning is Malcolm and will be joined at the end of this by Stephen, our minister. Today's call to worship is a prayer by Christine Longhurst and it fits nicely with today's reading. O God, we gather together in your presence with expectation, hungry for an encounter with you, eager to hear your word. Open our eyes and ears to the presence of your Holy Spirit. May the seeds of your word scattered among us this day fall on fertile soil. May they take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and deeds. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and our Lord. Amen. So let us join our hearts and minds and come before the Lord in worship. We listen for the word of God read by Malcolm and then George and Myra will perform Will You Come and Follow Me? This morning's readings are taken from Matthew chapter 13, reading from verses 1 to 9 and then again from verses 18 to 23. The parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus left the house and went to the lakeside, where he sat down to teach. The crowd that gathered round him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it, while the crowd stood on the shore. He used parables to tell them many things. Once there was a man who went out to sow corn. As he scattered the seed in the field, some of it fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some of it fell on rocky ground, where there was little soil. The seeds soon sprouted because the soil wasn't deep, but when the sun came up, it burnt the young plants, and because the roots had not grown deep enough, the plants soon dried up. Some of the seed fell among thorn bushes, which grew up and choked the plants. But some seeds fell in good soil, and the plants produced corn. Some produced 100 grains, others 60, and others 30. And Jesus concluded, listen then if you have ears. And now reading from verse 18. Jesus explains the parable of the sower. Listen then and learn what the parable of the sower means. Those who hear the message about the kingdom but do not understand it are like the seeds that fell along the path. The evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in them. The seeds that fell on rocky ground stand for those who receive the message gladly as soon as they hear it. But it does not sink deep into them and they don't last long. So when trouble or persecution comes because of the message, they give up at once. The seeds that fell among thorn bushes stand for those who hear the message, but the worries about this life and the love for riches choke the message, and they don't bear fruit. And the seeds sown in the good soil stand for those who hear the message and understand it. They bear fruit, some as much as 100, others 60, and others 30. Amen.
Thank you to Malcolm and thank you to George and Myra. We all have someone in our lives who can tell a good story, spin a yarn. Sometimes it's completely true, often totally fictitious, occasionally a mixture of the two. Whatever the factual content, when this person begins a story, you know you'll be in for a treat. It may be this person can make the most mundane of tales, the most everyday events into something worth putting the knitting or the crossword to one side for and giving them your full attention. I had an uncle who came into this category, you could say. Now, in fairness, how much truth lay in many of his tales is anyone's business. And often you would sit with bated breath as he reached the climax of a really engrossing story, which, especially as a child, you'd wait with bated breath. And with the last three or four words, you'd realise that it was a joke. It had never any truth at all. It was a convoluted story. A similarly gifted storyteller in the village I lived in, in the Lake District, would hold a bar full of customers almost to ransom as he told stories of local inhabitants of years gone by. Stories that would be worthy of Geoffrey Archer or Roald Dahl or Somerset Maugham or whichever teller of short stories you favour. Stories that would rival the best. Only this time they were real. Well, at least I think they were real. Or maybe your great storyteller was a teacher. I love history, I always have done and I still do. It was always my favourite subject at school. And when I went to university, church history continued to be a real treat for me. But in first and second year at high school, my love of history was started by my fantastic history teacher. I'd love to mention her by name, but I better not. She made the Picts and the Celts come to life with a retelling of their adventures. It was never like being in a classroom, far too exciting and interesting. Mind you, it possibly helped that she let us eat sweeties as she told us the story. And not only did we bond over a love of history, but our fondness for Clove Rock. I firmly believe I learned so much in her class because of how she told the stories. They popped to life in her hands. And here this morning, we hear from the greatest teller of stories that we know of. Here we have Jesus telling the parables. These parables were not all new. Some of them had their heritage in ancient Jewish rabbinical teaching, which relied on telling stories and then explaining the meaning. The themes covered by Jesus' stories were not all new either. We know of the Good, Samar the Good Shepherd from Old Testament times and this story today, the story of the sower, would also have been a well-loved tale. Jesus probably told it often. It would be familiar to the listeners. Remember, this was the times when few, very few, would be literate and the oral tradition of telling stories was the default setting. Jesus used parables to help get his meaning across right away. The stories in Matthew are told because beforehand people were not understanding. And Jesus wanted to make sure the seeds he sowed flourished, produced the best fruit. So he told stories that captured the imagination of his listeners, excited them and made them wish to hear more. Because good stories help us engage with the teller, help us engage with the material. And when we're engaged, when we're absorbed, we take it all in all the easier and grasp the concepts better. And this is an essential message from this parable. Hearing the gospel, understanding the gospel and living the gospel, carrying out the instructions and the commands. Because implementing the lessons learned from scripture is vital if we're to grow spiritually. We shouldn't just read the stories or hear them on a Sunday, but we should give them some thought, reflect on them, chew them over in our heads, mull the, them over throughout the week and discover what the words are really saying to us, to us as individuals and as a body of brothers and sisters in Christ. 
What we hear from scripture should dict dictate our own way of life, how we treat others, how we are in our day-to-day -day lives. We should strive to live the gospel. We read the par parable of the prodigal son and once we've digested it, reflected upon it and realised that one of the themes is forgiveness, we need then to put that into action and forgive any in our own lives who we feel have aggrieved us. When we read about the Good Samaritan, we must then treat all we meet as we ourselves would wish to be treated. Love everyone, treat everyone as our neighbours. These are not just nice stories told for our entertainment. Like my fellow lover of Clove Rock, Jesus' purpose in storytelling was to teach, to instruct and inform. Following Jesus' example, living by his guidance will see us draw even closer to him. And this is when that promised abundant crop appears. Being faithful to Christ and the words we hear in scripture lets us grow in spirit. We all have the potential to be good soil. We all have the potential to be empowered by God's word. It helps get us through the bad times, the times we feel tempted, the times we feel hard done to, persecuted perhaps. Let's us live a life unburdened by more worldly matters. We all have the opportunity to be transformed by hearing the word. The seed can change us all. I'm going to end with the last few lines from the hymn that we heard a few moments ago. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll grow, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Ian will now play a short piece for us to reflect upon. Again, thank you to Ian for the Chopin prelude. And now we come together in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, in prayer we come before you, thanking you for your presence in our lives and in the life of the world. Thanking you for the opportunity to offer ourselves to you and commit ourselves to following you and sharing in the work of your kingdom. Lord, your kingdom is present where love is supreme, where peace is found, where mercy prevails. A kingdom built not with bricks or mortar, but by prayer and actions of sacrificial love. It is Christ's strength that sustains us in his work. It is Christ's mission to the poor, the overlooked, the lost that we are engaged in, and it is Christ's will that all God's children would know his love and his peace. Gracious God, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we pray for the building of your kingdom and pray that the seeds of your kingdom might grow and bear fruit in this world of ours seeds of hope, seeds of peace, seeds of mercy, seeds of love. God of compassion, we pray for the many who are oppressed by crushing political and economic circumstance, those persecuted on grounds of faith or their colour or background, 
The family is torn apart by apart by age-old feuds, petty tensions, ill-founded jealousies, privilege and prejudice. Men and women ground down by lack of food. The children oppressed by discrimination and disadvantage. Those lacking the resources of education. The downtrodden and those seen as unable to make a positive contribution to the life of the world. Empower, encourage and endorse all who follow Jesus, who try to address the needs of the isolated and lonely, sometimes at enormous personal cost. The concerned workers who day to day bring food and shelter, care and compassion to the hungry and the homeless. Those who hear the world's poorest cry out for justice and mercy and respond without question or analysis or of impact. Those who overflow with generosity. Those who take food and water even to those who are ungrateful. The faithful who day by day take time to pray and to listen carefully to God's word. Those who champion justice and who have the courage and conviction to speak up and speak out. Who try to change the mindset of exclusion and condemnation. Those who are unafraid of persecution, personal disadvantage and power in the world. Lord, we remember those who are ill in mind, body and spirit, those who are dying and those who care for them, those who have recently experienced loss and the pain of bereavement. May all those whom we name in the silence be aware of the presence of your Spirit among them. Lord, hear our prayers. Now I invite you to pray with me the words that Jesus taught in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. We hope you have enjoyed being with us this week. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and God bless.